Hi friends, this is Seher from Easy Beasy and the topic that we are going to discuss today is called as glycolysis. Glycolysis is the first step of both aerobic and anaerobic respiration. In glycolysis, the six carbon compound called as glucose is going to enter the cytoplasm of the cell where it is going to get degraded into three carbon compound called as pyruvate. Now in this reaction, it is going to release two ATP molecules and two NADH molecules. This reaction that glucose is converting itself into pyruvate is an oxidative reaction. Because when glucose is going to get degraded into pyruvate, it is going to release electrons. These electrons will be taken by NAD plus and converted itself into NADH. So this reaction is a reduction reaction. Before moving forward, let's see the little bit details about what is oxidation and what is reduction. So in order to understand the oxidation and reduction reaction, we have four different criterias. The first criteria is the gain or loss of electrons. So if a molecule or a compound is going to lose electrons, as you can see in this reaction, this magnesium is going to lose electron and will convert itself into magnesium ion with plus two charge. So magnesium is going to get oxidized here. On the other hand, this copper already have a plus two charge in the reactant site and this copper will gain electrons from magnesium so, the copper will get reduced in this reaction. The second criteria which is going to determine whether this reaction is going to be oxidized or reduced is based on the gain and loss of oxygen. Now again in this reaction, this magnesium is going to gain oxygen from copper. So magnesium is going to convert itself into magnesium oxide and will oxidize itself. On the other hand, copper oxide is going to lose oxygen and will convert itself into copper. So this reaction is a reduction reaction. The third criteria which is going to determine whether the molecule is going to get oxidized or reduced is based on oxidation number. Again in this reaction, this magnesium doesn't have any charge. But on the product side, this magnesium has plus two charge here. So the oxidation number is increased. That's why in this reaction, magnesium is oxidized. On the other hand, copper had plus two charge on the reactant side. But on the product side, it doesn't have any charge. So oxidation number for copper is reduced. That's why this reaction is called as reduction reaction. Last criteria for determining whether the molecule is going to be oxidized or reduced is going to be based on loss or gain of hydrogen atom. So if a compound or molecule will lose hydrogen, that reaction will be called as oxidation reaction. And if a molecule or a compound is going to gain hydrogen, that reaction will be called as reduction reaction. Now, on the basis of these four criteria, let's see the reaction of glycolysis again and determine why the glycolysis is an oxidative reaction. Okay, now glucose is going to convert itself into pyruvate with the loss of electrons and hydrogen. So these are the two criteria that we discussed just now that loss of electrons means oxidation and loss of hydrogen means oxidation. If we look at the reaction of NAD converting itself into NADH, this reaction is a reduction reaction. Let's see which criteria is going to meet this reaction. The first criteria is that it is going to gain electron that was released from glucose. So it is a reduction reaction because it is going to gain electrons. It is also going to gain hydrogen. So gaining of hydrogen is a reduction reaction. If we look at the oxidation number of this reactant, the oxidation number of NAD plus is plus one. And on the product side, NADH doesn't have any charge. So the oxidation number of NADH is zero. So in this reaction, 
the oxidation number of this reaction is decreasing, confirming that this is a reduction reaction. Now, glycolysis is not that simple as it seems in this slide. There are three different types of stages present in the glycolysis, and 10 different types of steps or reactions present within those phases. Let's see the phases of glycolysis. So the first phase is that glucose is going to convert itself into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. This phase is called as energy investment phase. Why it is called as energy investment phase? Because it is going to require two ADB molecules in order to convert glucose into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. The second phase is that fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is going to convert itself into two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. This phase is called as cleavage phase. In the third phase, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is going to convert itself into pyruvate. And this phase is called as energy generation phase because four molecules of ATP is going to get generated in this phase and two molecules of NADH is also going to get produced in this phase. Now, four molecules in total is the production of glycolysis in which two molecules are consumed in the first phase. So the net ATP molecule that is going to get produced in glycolysis is plus two. Now, let's see each phase in more detail with all the reactions present in them. So the first phase is energy investment phase, in which the first step is that we have the six carbon molecule called as glucose. Let's count them. So this is one, two, three, four, five, and six. With the help of hexokinase, this glucose is going to convert itself into glucose 6-phosphate. The kinase enzyme is going to transfer a phosphate group from one molecule to another. So in this situation, we are taking phosphate group from ATP molecule, converting it into ADP. And that phosphate group will be shifted to glucose, converting it into glucose 6-phosphate. The second step is that this glucose 6-phosphate, with the help of an enzyme called as phosphoglucose isomerase, will rearrange its molecule and convert itself into fructose 6-phosphate. Now this is again a 6-carbon compound, only the arrangement of bonds are different in this molecule. Let's count the carbon atoms. So this is carbon number 1. This is 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. This is the same molecule with the different bondings present in this molecule. The third step is that this fructose 6-phosphate, with the help of an enzyme called as phosphofructokinase 1, will convert itself into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Again, we have a kinase enzyme here. So it will shift a phosphate group from one molecule to another. Again, in this case, it will take the phosphate group from ATP molecule, converting itself into ADP, and the phosphate group will be shifted to carbon number 1. Make sense? Okay. Now, this is called as energy investment phase. Because as you can see in this slide, the consumption of two ATP molecules are done in step 1 and step 3. Let's move on to the second phase. The second phase is called as cleavage phase. So we have fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. In step 4, this fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, with the help of an enzyme called as aldolase, is going to degrade itself into two 3-carbon compounds. So the breakage will be done from here and here, resulting in two compounds. The first compound is called as dihydroxyacetone phosphate. 
and the second compound is called as glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. So if we say the carbon number 1, 2, and 3 is present in the first compound, and the carbon 4, 5, and 6 are present in glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Step 5 is that dihydroxyacetone phosphate, with the help of an isomerase, can be shifted itself into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. So, in the end of cleavage phase, we have two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Let's move on to the third phase, that is the energy generation phase. Now, we have two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. In step 6, this molecule, with the help of an enzyme called as glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase, is going to convert itself into 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. Now, this enzyme is called as dehydrogenase. It means that it is going to remove a hydrogen atom from the reactant site. Removing hydrogen from the reactant site means that this reaction is oxidation reaction. This hydrogen will be taken up by NAD+, converting itself into NADH. So this reaction is a reduction reaction. Now we have two inorganic phosphate groups here that is going to get attached itself with carbon number 1 instead of hydrogen, converting that molecule into 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. We are taking two inorganic phosphate here because we have two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Make sense? Okay, step 7. In step 7, 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate is going to convert itself into 3-phosphoglycerate. Over here, what happened is the phosphate that was attached with carbon number 1 is going to release itself. And this phosphate will be taken up by ADP, converting itself into ATP. Step 8. In step 8, 3-phosphoglycerate, with the help of an enzyme called as phosphoglyceromutase, will convert itself into 2-phosphoglycerate. This is a kind of isomerization in which the bonds are just shifting from one place to another. So now you can see that phosphate is attached with carbon number 2 instead of carbon number 3. Step 9. Now, 2-phosphoglycerate, with the help of an enzyme called as enolase, is going to release water molecule. This water molecule can be generated from the OH present on carbon number 3 and H present on carbon number 2. Converting this molecule into phosphenol pyruvate. As you can see, the double bond present between the carbon number 2 and carbon number 3 as a result for the release of water molecule. Now why we have two molecules of water? Because we have two molecules of 2-phosphoglycerate. Step 10. In step 10, the phosphenol pyruvate, with the help of an enzyme called as pyruvate kinase, will convert itself into two molecules of pyruvate. Now here, again, we have a kinase enzyme. So, kinase means shifting of phosphate grow from one molecule to another. Now, in this reaction, this phosphate group will be released by phosphenol pyruvate and will attach itself with ADP molecule. Converting this ADP molecule into two ATP molecules. Because we have two molecules of phosphenol pyruvate here. As a result, in energy generation phase, two molecules of ATP are generated in step 10 and two molecules of ATP are generated in step 7. In total, four molecules of ATP are generated in energy generation phase, out of which two molecule was used in energy investment phase. So the net amount of ATP is plus 2. Now, this type of phosphorylation is called as substrate level phosphorylation. That's it for now. Thank you very much for watching this video. 
If you like it, please subscribe our channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.